Welcome back to the homestead and welcome back to our apple orchard here. And today I want to talk about something and address pest, pest control, actually organic pest control. And I want you guys to be honest, raise your hand if you've ever had problems with Japanese beetles. We have. And how about if you have ever just tolerated them? Raise your hand. Well, we have too. Until last year where we were decimated. They ate every single leaf off of all of our trees. It was just terrible, everything. And everyone around us had the same problems. All their leaves, all their apple trees were just decimated. And you guys might have heard about those Japanese beetle traps, those bags that you can hang up in your yard. And they do work great. They'll attract them. The second you put the bag up, I mean, they're on top of them. But they're attracting them into your yard and then they're gonna reproduce. Obviously, the solution to this problem is destruction, not reproduction. So I've done a lot of like investigating and research and I think I came up with a solution that will help me with this problem for the next many, many years. Well, welcome into the war room because today I'm gonna to talk about the plan of attack and that is milky spore powder. Now, milky spore powder is a natural occurring um, soil organism that actually has been around a very long time and it's one of the best ways of getting rid of Japanese beetles. They used to use it a long time ago to get rid of them. And basically what it does is it is a spore or bacteria and when the grub or the larva eats it, what happens is it kind of um, like reproduces inside of them, the spores, and then it will kill them. And then as the grub decomposes, it's going to like let go millions of more of those spores into the soil. So what happens, it's sort of like that gift that keeps on giving. It's just gonna keep reproducing and reproducing. And when it reproduces, it needs to be like the best temperatures between 60 and 70, 70 degrees in the soil for it to work the best. And then throughout that, it's just going to be getting rid of more and more of those grubs and then they won't be able to reproduce. Because when you actually have the adult beetle, that's what's harder to get rid of. The grubs are gonna really be um, decimated by this powder. So I've had people tell me about this. I've done my research on it. It doesn't harm insects or plants or humans or animals. It's very um, organic and it's not gonna do anything, but it will definitely get rid of the grubs that will turn into these Japanese beetles. So I've never done this before. Uh, it would be kind of cool if you guys, some of you guys decide if you have this problem with Japanese beetles, you did it and we can do it together and kind of see what happens. They say it may take a couple years for it to come into full effect, especially if you um, are living in a colder climate. It takes a couple years for you to get the full effect of getting rid of most of all the beetles. But it's gonna help this year, the next year after that, and then they say that it could go on for 10, 15, 20 years where you're not gonna have this problem anymore because these spores are gonna stay in the soil. So I'm gonna try it. I've never done it before. Um, I'm not an expert on milky spore, but what I've researched, it looks like it might be a really good deal. So we're gonna go out today. It's a wonderful day to do it because I have some cloud cover. It's kind of misting rain because you wanna apply it when you're gonna get maybe a light rain so that it'll soak down into the ground. Milky spore is a very, very fine powder. It's very similar to diatomaceous earth or DE if you guys have ever used that before. So you don't wanna breathe it in because of the particles are so small or get it on your skin. So I'm gonna be wearing my gloves when I put it in the applicator. So this is a 10 ounce bag. And a 10 ounce bag will cover about 2,500 square feet. So I'm gonna apply it in a grid system. So wherever you guys have the need to put it, you could put it in your garden, you could put it in your yard, around your rose bushes, wherever. This is gonna cover 2,500 square feet. So if you wanna do half of it, you could do half of it. And what I'm gonna do is go ahead and put it in an applicator, which is very suggested, because the suggested use is one teaspoon per four feet. So I'm gonna put in the applicator because it's gonna be much easier. So I put the funnel in the applicator and I'm gonna put the whole 10 ounce bag in the applicator. Very carefully. 
So I use a towel so it's not spraying up at me. Make sure that my lid's good on my applicator. Now let's talk about the applicators real quick. This one, of course, you can see it's store-bought. I actually borrowed mine from our Amish neighbor. But you can get really creative with the applicators. I've seen those, you know, the wrapping paper tubes that you get after you use up the wrapping, or wrapping paper. You put like a plastic wrap on the bottom, maybe with a rubber band, and then you can poke some holes in there. Because you need about a teaspoon for every four feet that you're going to do or even a coffee can attached to it like a stick. I've seen PVC pipe. So you can get really creative. So you can do research on that or borrow one from a neighbor like I just did. <laughs> well, I have my weapons, it's time for the attack. Now you can also do the teaspoon and put a teaspoon every four feet, but you're gonna need to get close to it. So if you are gonna do it that way, definitely wear a mask and make sure you're protected and it's not a windy day at all. But I highly would recommend making an applicator or getting an applicator when you're doing this. So this applicator sort of is like the old, you know, like the salt and pepper shakers that you get. So my Amish friend told me, cause you wanna make sure you have about a teaspoon cause you're gonna do it every four feet. She says that was about a teaspoon when she did it, not the whole thing. So I already know. So if you guys get this applicator or make your own applicator, make sure you do a test shake to make sure you're getting a teaspoon so that you can do it every four feet on your... the last one done so I'm gonna go four foot over and start another row this right here moles moles love grubs and if you can get rid of the grubs the moles will leave <laughs> well there you go 2,500 square feet and I almost got a blister <laughs> So if you don't use the whole thing, you can just use half of it. It worked out good for me. 2,500 square feet is a lot. And I actually had enough to go over by the compost pile where we had those mole hills. So that's good. I got over there. But, you know, make sure when you're doing this and applying it that you have a rain coming. It's misting right now. We're getting ready to get some rain. So that's going to soak it in. Otherwise, you're going to need to water it so that it'll absorb down into the ground. And I would love to hear from anybody who's ever done this before. Leave a comment below.